Good morning again, everyone. More than half of all accidents occur while staying at home, riding a car, walking on the sidewalk, or crossing the street. That doesn't leave too many safe places to hang out. <laughs> Although they do say that only one one thousandth of one percent of all deaths occur in the church. So you're pretty safe here. You see, we all take risks all the time. We just might not always realize it. In fact, it's a small miracle that you all made it here safely today. Good luck getting home. <laughs> and even better luck once you get there. Now, in today's gospel, a man going on a journey calls his servants together and entrusts his possessions to them. Now, this is not just any ordinary man. This is quite a wealthy man. He divides eight talents of cash among three of his servants. Now, we're not exactly sure how much a talent was worth back then, but everyone agrees that it was a very large sum of money. Some have estimated one talent to be worth the wages of an ordinary laborer for 15 years. In today's world, at minimum wage, that would be nearly a quarter million dollars for one talent. So, in essence, this man gives one of his servants more than a million dollars another a half million dollars, and a third, almost a quarter million dollars. How many of us have bosses like that? <laughs> well, actually, we all do. Because we all have God as our boss. <laughs> Amen? And God has entrusted huge amounts to us. God has entrusted us with our very lives. Lives that are not just for our own good, but for the benefit of the people and communi community around us. God has entrusted us with family and friends. God has entrusted our baptismal families with Josiah, Anthony, and William. Lives that we may have helped bring into this world and lives that we can clearly affect with our care or our neglect by our support or by our exploitation. And God has entrusted us with all of creation. Everything that God has ever worked for is now in our hands. And God calls us to step up and accept that trust day in and day out. Now imagine the look on there's those servants' faces when their master handed over those huge sums of money to them. They, like us, were just 
ordinary people now facing huge responsibilities. And realizing what they had just been handed, it's understandable that their new responsibilities looked pretty daunting. Same with the parents when the kids arrived. Mm -hmm. But Jesus tells us that the master gives each servant a level of responsibility according to his ability. No more, no less. He not only trusted them with his valuable possessions, he only gave them what he knew they could handle. In fact, it's from this story that we get the modern meaning of our word talent. Because each one of us has talents that reflect our abilities. No more, no less. God has blessed us and entrusted us with talents and abilities that God knows we can handle. Now, two of the servants in the parable got that. They were confident that their master gave them exactly what they could handle. So they immediately took their talents and went out into the world. And with joy in their hearts, they witnessed to what the Master had done for them. They shared the good news of how blessed they were. They told people how generous their Master was, how wise he was, how gentle he was, how strong he was, how he never gave anyone any more that they could handle. Whether people wanted to hear it or not, those servants took the risk to share their joy. And when people were fighting and backbiting and taking up arms against one another, those servants took the risk to talk about peace and reconciliation. And when folks were hoarding all of their resources, when they were directing it all to themselves, those servants took the risk to remind folks about the poor and the needy, about the unemployed and the underemployed. They told them that their master made sure that there was plenty enough for everyone. And when folks wanted to focus all their efforts on making money and on borrowing money and on spending money because they thought that that would make them happy, those servants took the risk to preach that true joy came only when our hearts were filled with love, when we worked to serve others in need and when we followed the call that was deep within our hearts. You see, those first two servants got it. But the third servant in the story, well, he was afraid. Even though his master trusted him, he didn't trust his master. Even though the master only gave him what he could handle, he couldn't believe it because it still looked like way too much to him. And so like many of us facing significant responsibility, he became afraid. He was afraid to risk what he had been given. And so he decided to play it safe. He buried the talent he had been given, the gift that was his to serve the world, and he sat on it 
and kept it for himself. And when conflict arose and enemies came, he fought them tooth and nail. And when the economy changed, he refused to share what he had to improve the lot of others or to advocate for change or to support the needy in their struggles. And when he looked at his future and the future of his children and all the challenges that they face in the world, well, he never encouraged them to try something new, to be the best they could be, to follow their heart's desire. So many of the decisions we make in today's complicated world are based on our fears as we try to minimize our risks. It's just easier to hold on to what we have, to bury it where it, can be, where it can't be lost, and to play it safe until the Master returns. Because we fool ourselves into thinking that as long as we hold on to what we have, we'll always have it. But when the Master returns, that's not going to be the case. For the servants who engage the world with their talents, he gives them even more than what they got. He gives them a share of his joy. They receive that reward just because they trusted their master and engaged the talents he gave them, even though they produced different results. You see, we're not judged on the amount of the things we can accomplish. We're judged only on our efforts to engage the world and to commit our talents in service to others. We're judged only on our willingness to relinquish our need for control and to take the risks necessary to improve the world around us. You see, the real mistake of the third servant was that he thought that he was in control. He thought that if he could avoid all risks, he could hold on to whatever he had. And when it came time to reckon with the master, he discovered that he had it all wrong. Because the fact is that we have never been in control of the world around us. We have never been in control of the lives we lead. God is the only one in control. And God trusts us to risk the talents that God gives us in order to serve the world around us. So in a world marred by violence and war, can we take the risk of being people of peace, of looking for other ways of resolving conflict? This weekend we're honoring our veterans and public safety officials, the men and women who have risked their lives in service to our country and our community. And we are grateful for their service. And we continue to pray and to work for the peace that they and all of us desire so desperately. Because we know that peacemaking is a very risky business. And in a world in which the rich continue to get richer while the poor are only getting poorer, can we take the risk of intervening on behalf of the most vulnerable in our society? Next weekend, we'll be taking up the collection for the Catholic Campaign for Human Development, a program of the United States bishops, of which I serve on the local Baltimore committee here, in which we try to give those who struggle a hand up instead of a hand out. 
all because we believe that it's worth taking the risk to help the poor help themselves. In a world in which young people are formed to chase the almighty dollar instead of the almighty God, can we take the risk of encouraging them to follow their heart's desire, especially when it means serving others in need? Today our second collection is for the education of our seminarians. These young men, together with other women and men who are pursuing religious vocations, are taking the risk of making less money for the reward of being much happier. Because disciples who give of themselves fully using the talents that God has given them, receive even greater gifts in return. It's a pretty dangerous world out there. And we take risks every day of our lives, from crossing the street to living in our own homes. We just don't always see that we're taking those risks. And at the same time, God has entrusted things of great value to us. Our lives, the lives of our loved ones, the whole creation in which we live. And God has given us talents that we need to accept those responsibilities that he has entrusted to us. The question is whether we recognize God's trust in us and God's gifts to us. Life is risky and God trusts us with those risks. All God asks is that we trust God in the same way that God trusts us. Amen. Thank you.